chapter 4 estimation of parameters but before we go to the main topic on estimation of parameters I'll be discussing first the T distribution also known as the student's T distribution so what is a T distribution it is a probability distribution which is utilized in estimating parameters of a certain population in case of the sample size is small. That is, n must be less than 30. And or the population variance or the standard deviation is unknown. Both of them are population. Now when do we use the z or the t distribution? Now we use the z if our sample size is greater than or equal to 30 or the population standard deviation or the variance population variance is known no, because if the population variance is known then automatic the population standard deviation is known and vice versa then we will use t if n is less than 30 and the population standard deviation is unknown. So in this case, if the population standard deviation is unknown, we can solve or the, stan the sample standard deviation is known because our sample size is given. So what are the formulas? So we have this for the Z. Of course, we are done with this one on the left. This is if the population standard deviation is known. But if it is unknown, then we have this. That is, the sample standard deviation is known and our sample size n is less than 30. So what are the properties of the, of the t-distribution? Like the standard normal curve, it is bell-shaped. Okay, it is also bell-shaped symmetrical about the mean so meaning the mean is also at the center the mean median and mode are equal to zero and are located at the center of the distribution so here still at the center the same with the normal standard normal curve and also asymptotic to the x-axis so it will not touch the x-axis it will just approach now, the t-distribution differs from the standard normal distribution in the following ways. First, the variance is greater than 1. If you notice, or if you can still recall, the variance and the standard deviation of the standard normal curve or distribution is 1. Okay, we have this. The mean is 0, but the variance or the standard deviation is one but here in the t distribution it is greater than one the t distribution is family of curves based on the degrees of freedom which is a number related to the sample size and last as the sample size increases the t distribution approaches the normal curve so as n increases this t distribution will approach the normal curve now what is this degrees of freedom this refer to the number of independent observation in a given set of data we can find it by doing this formula df is equal to n minus 1 where the df is the degree of freedom and n is the sample size. Now, for example, if our n, n is 15, our degrees of freedom is 14. If our n or sample size is 28, our degrees of freedom is 28 minus 1, so 27. Now, if we're given with the degrees of freedom, say, for example, our degrees of freedom is 10, what is our n? So by just looking at this, n is equal to the degrees of freedom plus 1. Okay? So 
this is equal to 10 plus 1. So therefore, the sample size is 11. If the degrees of freedom is 23, n is equal to 23 plus 1, which is equal to 24. Now, since degrees of freedom is based on the sample size, and the sample size is always positive, then degrees of freedom is also always positive. Now, we have this t-distribution table. So, if you notice, we have this on the left column. We have the degrees of freedom, the v v df. And on the upper row, we have the alpha, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, and 0.005. So what is this alpha? This alpha is also known as the level of significance. It is the probability that you will make the mistake of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is we will talk about this more when we touch the hypothesis testing. So for now, we'll, I'll just teach you how to find the t values using this t distribution table. So let's start. Determine what is asked based on the given data below. So we're given with a sample size 13 and alpha 0.1. Now, what is our t value so our t value is based on these two variables we have the alpha and the degrees of freedom now our alpha is given by 0.1 but we don't have the degrees of freedom now degrees of freedom is equal to n plus i ah, mean n minus one sorry this is n minus one so therefore, the degrees of freedom here is 13 minus 1, so it's 12. So therefore, this is t sub 0 0.01, ah, 0.1, comma, 12. Okay, so just locate 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is here, and then 12 is here. So therefore, this is equal to 1.356. 1 1.356. Okay, next. Number two, we are given with the degrees of freedom and the alpha. So... We're given with this 2 already, so we can now use directly the table. So, for substitution, you just write 0 0.025, comma, 16. So, no need to do the minus 1 because it's already the degrees of freedom. So, 16, where is 16? This one. And 0 0.025 is this one. So, okay. 2.120 so this is equal to 2 2.120 okay 2.120 next we are going to find the sample size n but we are given with this 2 so our alpha is 0 0.025 so this one and our t value is 2.052 so on this column we just need to find or look 2.052 okay this one this is the 2.052 on the column of 0 0.025 so the degrees of freedom here is 27 so therefore the degrees of freedom is 27 but of course, our n is degrees of freedom plus 1. So this is now 27 
plus 1. So, the sample size, therefore, is 28. Okay. Next, number 4. Find the t-value when we're given with these values. Now, take note that our formula for this one is t x bar or the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So, all we need to do is to substitute. So, x bar is 43 or the sample mean minus the population mean 41 divided by 5, the sample standard deviation, and then divided by square root of 24. So, you can use your calculator. 5 divided by square root of 24. So, this is equal to 1.9595. But, if you notice in our table, uh, it uses the 3 decimal, up to 3 decimal numbers. So, the answer here, if we, if I copy the 4 decimal places, 9, ah, 9, 5, 9, 5, 9, actually we have this. So, up to 3, though, this 1, 9, so since this is 5, we can round this up to 10, so this will become 6. So, 0, 1.960. So, therefore, the T value here is 1.960. Okay. So, for the Z distribution or the normal distribution, we have up to two decimal places because of the the table or z-score uh, but for the t-table it is up to three decimal places and if you notice also in the normal distribution standard normal distribution the numbers on this part of the table they are areas or the probabilities okay but here in the t-table the values here are the t-values so they're not the same okay so i repeat these values here are the t values not the areas so actually the areas here that we can consider are this alpha on top okay next so we're given with n equals 25 and alpha 0 0.005 so our alpha is 0 0.005 so we have here so, we need the degrees of freedom. So, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So, we have 25 minus 1 or this is equal to 24. So, therefore, this is now equal to okay, t.005, 24 is equal to what? So, 24 is here. The last. 2.797 so this is 2.797 okay number six so here we're given with the degrees of freedom and 0 0.01 so no need to find the degrees of freedom because it's already given so we have 0 0.01 uh, 0 0.01 so this is not the one so this is 0 0.01 and then 18 so 18 is here at the bottom or at maybe at the center so therefore the t value here is 2.552 so 2.552 okay and last example, find the t-value when we're given with these values, okay? So, again, we'll use our formula t is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the quotient of 
the sample standard deviation and the square root of the sample size. So again, you can use your calculator. So we have 20 minus 18.5 divided by 3 divided by square root of 16. So the answer is 2. So you can have it as 2 or 2.000. 0, 0, 0.